Sono Kids presents Skin Tips That Matter. There are times when splenomegaly matters. In certain circumstances, being aware of the splenic enlargement could help us make the diagnosis. It might clue us in on the underlying etiology or even warn us about the possible complications. But the saddening truth is that clinical exam of the spleen has rather questionable sensitivity for the detection of splenomegaly, ranging anywhere from 20 to 70%. Let's say you are wondering about the splenic size, but you just don't know how to examine it clinically. Or your patient is morbidly obese. And let's not forget that giant abdominal wall muscles could challenge even the most seasoned clinician. In a different scenario, you could be dealing with a case of severe left upper quadrant tenderness preventing a good exam, or a kid that is completely uncooperative. Then it's not the time to be arrogant, overly self-confident, nor to skip the splenic exam. Though I would surely skip making the headlines as the dog who caused iatrogenic splenic rapture due to over-enthusiastic palpation. Believe it or not, such cases have already been reported in the literature. So if I may suggest, grab that ultrasound probe instead and gently assess your patient the splenomegaly. Anytime you think about it, worry about it, but can't accomplish the task clinically. And sure you know how to do it. It's not any different than the left upper quadrant view on the FAST exam. Let's look at case number one then. I bet I know what you're thinking that it looks pretty normal, and I could not agree more. Normal splenic to venal length ratio is close to one, so as long as both the organs look similar in size, you don't have to worry about significant splenomegaly. But please don't compare your measurements to that abdominal ultrasound that was obtained a year or two ago. Your patients are growing, and so are their spleens. There are publications out there with age-specific dimensions, but my idea is to make it quick and easy for you. You should suspect splenomegaly in kids if the spleen is more than 1.25 times longer than the adjacent left kidney. Let's move on to case number two. One of those, oops, I should have felt that one. Frankly, if you gotta use all your sauna moves, going up and down and all around with that transducer, then you must be dealing with splenomegaly. And last but not least, case number three. The spleen looks enlarged, there's no doubt about that. Nevertheless, let's go a little academic and get some age-specific answers. While doing my literature search, I found this really cool and simple formula for age-based calculation of the renal length in children older than one year. Assuming the splenic to renal length ratio of one, I'd expect this formula to apply to the spleens as well. It might not be perfect, but it should provide us with a rough estimation. It would likely bail us out if our patient already had a left nephrectomy. So let's apply it to a case of a 15-year-old child. 15 times 0.3 plus 6 equals 10.5. So if the kidney is supposed to measure around 10.5 centimeters in this particular case, then a spleen of 16.4 is clearly way too large. Obviously, you can measure both the organs to validate this theory. In the end, if you're still not sure I bet your friend with radiologist can help you out. All you have to do is ask. So let's put it all together. Once again, ultrasound rocks, this time in the evaluation for splenomegaly in kids. If you like estimations, just eyeball that spleen and compare it to the adjacent left kidney. Similar dimensions are normal. Suspect splenomegaly if the splenic to renal length ratio is bigger than 1.25. Make sure to record your measurements and save the images if possible. Before we finish, 
let me share a great thought from a great solo man, Chris Fox. I could not agree more. The point of Kill Ultrasound is an art and a challenge, but it can be learned in a shorter time than it takes to become a master of physical diagnosis. I hope you enjoyed this scan tip. Please don't hesitate to email me with your comments and concerns. I'd be happy to discuss them all.